Arteta! What a strike! Instead of the usual tosh of talking to people who don't really know what they're talking about, we've brought in an expert. This is the Arsenal Vision post-match podcast. My name is Elliot Smith. You can block me on Twitter, Yankee Gunner. That's right. Normally, you just listen to us, me, Tim, Paul, Scott, Clive. You know, we just waffle on about Arsenal. Maybe we know stuff. Maybe we don't. But, you know, we hope it's entertaining. But this time, this time we're going to talk to someone who is an expert in the field we are discussing. And the field we're discussing is sort of Arsenal, but it's also sort of music, or mostly music, because um, you know the song, Come On You Gunners, the intro song that we use for this podcast, quite gratefully, Um, but you may not know that that song was written by a gunner and a talented musician and a successful musician named Roxy Arms Harris. You can find him on Twitter at Roxy Arms. Hello, Roxy. Hi, Elliot. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Good to talk to you. And so I just want to say, like, if I'm ever in a situation where, like, there's a, a hit out on me or a bounty on my life, and I need, like, a security detail. Uh, Add a demolisher in our <laughs> Patreon community, and, and Roxy would be my go to bodyguards. The arms in Roxy Arms Harris uh, is in reference to your quite impressive arms. So, in addition to being <laughs> a, a talented musician, you, uh, you also like to put on a gun show. Um, do you spend more time practicing your music or, or sculpting? the arms which is the priority in your life well i'd say half half, half, half. Okay. <laughs> no that's 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 a joke I, ironically actually i don't really um do much gun workout as such uh, mm. i'm i'm i think i'm naturally uh, i'm naturally blessed in that department fortunately for me because i'm quite lazy i don't really yeah. like doing exercise so <laughs> yeah i i can definitely not identify with what you've just said yeah i mean look it is what it is man congratulations to you i i I am impressed both by your musical capabilities and by your genetics so that's that's a great thing thanks thanks to my mom and dad as well yeah they well they do deserve uh quite the gratitude for that look the genetics yeah (laughs) yeah, they they play a role man all right so so here's the deal you the come on you gunner song has been the intro for the podcast basically since the beginning and yeah um you know, behind that, there's quite an interesting story because, Roxy, you, you wrote that song and you've made quite a career of not just playing with some very famous um, acts and, and touring with some famous acts, and we'll get into that at the end, but you've been an Arsenal fan and you've been an Arsenal songwriter and, and you've written some songs that a lot of Arsenal fans are going to be familiar with. And so today, I think given that we're in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic and have no actual football to talk about, we'll <clears throat> talk a little bit about you know, the music you've made and your background doing it. And I want to start just by asking, which came first, the music or the Arsenal? Uh, no, th- definitely the music came first. Um, always, I was always interested in, in music, um, probably off off the back of my dad, who's, mm. you know, I, I describe him as a frustrated musician, you know, he always loved music, played guitar, um, just obsessive about it but in the end he his career path took him down uh, the route of education so he ended up being a, a senior lecturer uh, down at king's college for many years um so that but he was the driving force but behind me getting into into music um he sort of started me off at piano lessons when i was about seven um and then when i started secondary school um I really became interested in playing the drums uh, and at the time, uh, recorded music, you know, electronic music was sort of still very new. But we were lucky in that our music teacher, head of music, he had a, a small setup. So he had, you know, a computer with, you know, a sound module and you could make your own music. And he really encouraged, you know, anybody that showed, showed a real interest in that, he encouraged them to pursue that. So I'd say, yeah, really from the age of 11, I sort of, discovered that oh i can you know can play drums play piano you know i like making music you know love to do this professionally but it was never really you know until i got much older it didn't really become a reality and i didn't really think it was something that would be possible um Mm. but yeah so that's that's kind of how it began the arsenal came really um i mean at the same time our neighbor across the road was a mad arsenal fan um, and he used to take us to some res- reserve games. And that's when I first got introduced to Arsenal properly in terms of actually going down to the ground and, you know, seeing some of the players. In, in actual fact, 
before we, because um, I grew up in North London, um, in Crouch End, but before mm. uh, before moving to Crouch End, my parents actually put a, a bid on a house on Avonall Road, uh, so it would have ended up being right opposite um, Arsenal. Um, and But in the end, uh, they got gazumped, as the saying goes, mm. and uh, <laughs> we didn't end up living there, which I think my mum was quite happy about. Um, no. But yeah, so it started f- from there in terms of me going to the games, but I'd say possibly when I was a bit older I really got into the the kind of the tribal aspect of being a football fan you know supporting your team laughing at others misfortune um feeling terrible when we lost you know and your you know whole weekend being ruined uh all of that came a bit later mm. yeah well, the music you, was always there from, from the very the very beginning stick with me buddy and I'll teach you how to be miserable when we win because that <laughs> <laughs> that is the trick, my friend. <laughs> you know, it's something that I've yeah. worked on very hard. Um, so, look, obviously, you know, as an Arsenal fan and as a musician, you determined at some point, hey, you know, I, I want to write some songs for Arsenal. And I'm not talking about just, you know, like chants, but songs <clears throat> that, that, you know, were meant to sort of go viral and, and connect the community and things like that. Mm. And, you know, I think before we, we start sort of going through some of the songs that you put out there and what they meant to you and sort of how they arrived in the culture... Um, you know, what was the process for you for determining that you wanted to combine these things? I mean, I know, you know music means a lot to a lot of people, and there's certainly a lot of musicians who are passionate supporters of the Arsenal or, or whatever the case may be and never combine those two aspects of their life. So was there a moment where you said, you know what, I want to write songs uh, related to the club I love? Yeah, well, I mean, prior to sort of beginning to write Arsenal-related songs, I'd already done... Uh, two albums, um, one with uh, um, my production partner at the time, uh, whose name who goes by the name Spoonface, um, mm. and we released an album under the the name Ear Dis. That was the what we called ourselves, and it was in the genre of funky house, um, a genre called broken beat, bit of garage, um, and we so we were actively pursuing that for a while and did an album ended up getting signed uh, by a um, large independent um and we had a song called hey girl uh, which was released god this is back in 2003 printed up vinyl did the whole thing you know taking it around to the record shops and it finally got picked up several years later um so off the back of that album i then did a second album which was a combination of uh, remixes um, and original stuff, and so when I turned my attention to the Arsenal stuff, it was, it was off the back of you know having, having already done a lot of original material, mm. um, and the Arsenal thing just came at the point where you know we'd been getting such a, a, a rough ride in the media. I still think we do um, compared to lots of other teams, and there was lots of stuff going on about. You know, X amount of years since the Arsenal last won a trophy, you know, seemed to be singled out when no other team was 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 getting that kind of countdown in terms of X amount of years until they've won a trophy. So mm. there were lots of lots of pressure building up. And I also felt that Wenger, being, you know, the classy man that he is, you know, would never really kind of challenge the media in, in this way. So they'd just be allowed to just, you know tear him to shreds, tear the team to shreds. Um, and, and eventually I think this got to the fans. So when, when I wrote Come and You Gunners, it was, I think in 2011. The skepticism that is surrounding this club at the moment, for me, is too high. And if I just would like to achieve one thing today, is trust us, this team has qualities. This team will fight. And if you help us to do that, I think we have a chance to have a successful team. Big up to Arsene Wenger, then Suchesny, Frimpong, Song, and Aaron Ramsey, Kusha, Walcott, Amaiichi, Javinio, Arshavin, Van Persie, Oxlade, Chamberlain, and Rezitsky, Jenkinson, Sanya, Fabianski, Vermaelen, Shamak, and Koscielny, Giroud, and Diaby. When Cesc went to Barca, things were looking worse, not better, until we went to Everton and poor Arte. It was really just um, um, to show... You know, an alternative, an alternative sound to Arsenal, um, and what they, and what they represent, and the fact that there are people that support them and want them to do well, 
Uh, and, and the hope was, it wasn't even a, a, about going viral as such, it was just to try and do something which had some energy about it and, you know, could could rile the team up, you know, could get them, you know, up for a game. In my mind, I was thinking I'd love them to play this before the match or, you know, when they're in the dressing room. So that's how Coming Your Gunners really came about. Um, and actually, it was Linus that did a music video uh, for his first, the first video of, you know, all of these songs that So I've I'll just done. stop you, because just in case people aren't <clears throat> familiar with Linus's name, you should be, because uh, he is the person who started Arsenal Vision and the person who had the brilliant idea to start this very podcast. And if you listened from the beginning, you know that he actually did some intros um, to the podcast at the beginning, sort of telling you what was going to be coming up in that episode. So so uh, Linus shot the music video, and I, I, I mean, I just have to ask, because I, I candidly have not seen it, were you topless in the music video? <laughs> no, and actually, no. I wasn't even in the video. Oh my goodness! Uh, okay. Because what it was <laughs> is, it was just you know, it was literally just taking what I was saying and trying to put you know, get f- old footage basically of the the players and the team. So it was nothing. It wasn't anything as sophisticated as a proper music video. So this wasn't stand kind of like, on the hood of a sports car, shirt off no, variety. No, no sad, that's sadly a shame. not. Okay. I think that probably would have gone down a bit better. But uh, having sp- L- Lina spent all this time doing the video. I think after two, three days, it was taken off for, you know, using, you know, I think the Premier League had put in a, uh, in a copyright infringement thing to yeah. do with the footage. Yeah, because if so. there's one thing that's going to scare away the Sky Sports of the world from broadcasting the Premier League, it's your music video of Come On The Gunners. I mean, I, I mean thank God they took that <laughs> yeah. down. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So <laughs> they, they probably took that down. And so that kind of killed, you know, any momentum, momentum that we yeah. had. <laughs> but fortunately, you know, because Linus is one of my, my best friends. So he, this was... I think shortly after I'd done this, he was talking about doing the podcast and he said, Oh, you know, can I use coming your gunners? I said, yeah, of course. And, and so that's how it ended up being, being used for the, um, the theme tune. And, you know, it's lasted all this time. Uh, so yeah, so that was common. Your gunners. That was the first one that I did. Um, and you know, I, I kind of, I, I got into it. I really enjoyed writing these songs and especially I think because Arsenal have got such a, a strong fan base I thought it was there was potential for the songs to be listened to by a bigger audience than just me as a sort of songwriter producer trying to push my own material out there with no kind of link to anybody I thought at least if it, there's a link to Arsenal that might encourage some people to at least give them a listen and, and see what they think about it. So that was, that was the story of Come You Gunners and how it ended up getting used. Let, let me ask you something, because, I mean, you have played with some pretty big acts and some pretty big names, and we can get to some of that later, but, like, is it kind of funny on the one hand to be, like, part of the music scene and, and see your career growing and see your stature sort of rising and being around sort of these famous people, but then within the, the sort of world of the club you know, not, not having that stature and, you know, wanting to get recognized or wanting that recognition? Or did, did your stature musically sort of grow later after you were doing um, some of these, these Arsenal-related songs? I'd, I'd say there was definitely recognition when I did Sign the Ting. Um, that was well, that's where we were going to get to next. <laughs> you yeah. led me right to it. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the one where, like, you know, if you said to me, you know, was I aware of you? <clears throat> you know, obviously, before Linus introduced us, no, but I, of course, everybody knows Sign to Ting. Stick to the wing. Why? Playing up front just ain't your thing. Oh. Apart from your pace, what else are you offering? Now we got Oxlade Chamberlain. Oh. In your squat, technique he brings. That's why the fans, his name we sing. Ox. Should be you, but it's not, it's him. We ain't playing you to your Sign the Ting. What? Sign the Ting, nah, sign the Ting. What? Theo Walcott, sign the Ting. Yeah. If you don't well, then you're stuck on the bench. What? Listen what? to Finn Pong, chat about Dench. Yeah. We got yeah. Podolski, we got Giroud. Jim Even Jeremy has been up front too. Don't that to say that they're better than you, but you got a year left, so what you gonna do then? Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Sign the ting, sign the ting. Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Sign the ting, sign the ting. Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Sign the ting, sign the ting. Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Sign the ting, sign the ting. You'll never get more love than from the gunners. Think about that before you do a run. If you stay, I'll be happy. In fact, delighted. If you go, I hope you don't go to Man United. Are you gonna be just like the rest? Just take the money, forget the crest. The big fat cannon up on your chest, cause that's what makes you play your best. Sign the ting, nah, sign the ting. Theo Walcott, sign the ting. If you don't well, then you're stuck on the bench. Listen to Finn Pong, chat about Dench. We got Podolski, we got Giroud. Even Germany has been up front too. That ain't to say that they're better than you, but you got a year left, so what you gonna do then? Yeah. Well, that was, I mean, that was really the, the groundbreaker in terms of people hearing, you know, my name. A lot of the, the news outlets at the time thought that Roxy Arms was, a, was an act, you know, mm. was the name of a, 
a band or something or you know but um it was definitely i mean that that whole thing was really odd because i I woke up you know having had a vivid dream and you know, when I woke up, the first yeah, thing I heard the was the sheets, change the sheets. I know. Oh, oh, sorry, sheets. sorry, oh, sorry. God, sorry. Mess again. Different kind of dream. Different kind. Of, my bad. My bad. <laughs> Different kind of dream. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, what I, the first thing I remember when I woke up is, apart from the sheets, was um, hearing that Walcott, Walcott, Walcott chant in my head. It just, I was just going round and round and round and round. So that same day, I ended up writing maybe a first verse, uh, and I sent it to Linus. And he just thought it was hilarious. And so he's got to work of, of trying to piece something together, a, a, a video for, for that one as well. I think by the end of the day, I'd finished the song. Um, and then maybe, I think, a day later, I think Linus had done the video, which I thought was fantastic. It just it worked perfectly because it was just a you know, quirky, unusual song. And it just I think it worked really well. So... This was the first time, you know, there was there was a deliberate intention to try and see if we could get it viral. Um, <clears throat> and so the plan was send it to as many Arsenal supporting journalists as we possibly can on Twitter and mm. see if there's anybody that bites. And uh, so fortunately, it happened to be uh, John Cross from The Mirror, who responded to the you know the tweet that i'd sent to him he retweeted it said oh this is great and then maybe within an hour the daily mirror had then written an article about the fact that somebody had written a song about theo walcott and then the same day i think it went to the daily mail the evening standard and then i got a call from and i got an email from somebody from soccer am who was an arsenal fan and said oh could we use could we use this for our um, it was their goals of the week segment, and I said, "Yeah, sure." So by f- so this was on Monday we'd sort of started the push, and by Friday, uh, n- no, so yeah, by Friday it had f- maybe you know sort of fifty, sixty thousand hits or something, and then on Saturday, that's when it was shown on Soccer AM. It then just went mad, you know. The song actually went into the charts, went into the iTunes electronic charts, went to number two, um, <laughs> and you know it was just on Soccer AM. And then I got called by um, Abu Dhabi TV to be interviewed, and, and uh, Brazil, um, ESPN Brazil, and sort of some Norwegian television. It was all really unusual. I just found it funny and quirky, and it just showed that the. the the power of social media and more importantly, I think the Arsenal fans, because it was really off the back of the fact that Arsenal got so many supporters globally that really just pushed the song. But I I didn't expect it to get to the point where, you know, Theo would have, you know, was be asked about it in interviews. And I mean, he was asked about it on football focus on BBC. um, And he was asked about it again on five live and how, you know, Podolsky would call him signed a ting and, you know, I know Danny Welbeck used to do that as well. So that that was, from a personal point of view as a songwriter, it was great because you have that validation that what you're doing is, you know, is the right thing to be doing. You know, you're not wasting your time trying to write and nobody actually listening. So it was, it, I, I felt, I definitely felt a sense of accomplishment that, well, at least whatever happens, Arsenal fans will know this song. They'll know Sign the Ting. They know it had an impact at the time. You know, I don't. I, I, I wouldn't really say it would. It would have had much to do with uh, Theo signing or not. I think you know, if the money wasn't right, he wouldn't have signed the deal. But I think it was. There was definitely some pressure on him. I'd, I, I'd say because it drew a lot more attention to the fact that he was, you know, out of contract soon by lots of other fans that didn't even support Arsenal, but they even they were saying sign the ting. And, and to this day, you know, if, even if you go onto Twitter and you type in sign the ting, you'll see, you know, all sorts of fans um, talking about sign the ting to their, you know, to players on their teams as well. So it's definitely had an impact. I'm really proud of it. I, I love it. You know, I think it's really funny, but then I so, would say that. <laughs> well, look, I mean, it, it, 
it became part of the zeitgeist or zeitgeist. I never know how to say any of these words that I that I try to say. I don't know why I bother doing them, but it became part sure of that. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's like Schadenfreude or whatever word I can't say. Um, <laughs> it became part of zeitgeist at Arsenal, and I, you know, I think it's things like that that become part of the tapestry of our experience. You know, I. I I think, um, you know, I can sort of remember exactly what was going on around the club at that time. And I, I think it's pretty funny because as a result of that, I feel like I can remember Theo Walcott's contract saga more than I can remember, like, you know, Mesut Ozil's or some of the other major well, that's players it. that that's it. the club. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I've just said, no, I, I agree with you. I think that because, you know, like loads of players go through this exactly the same thing that Theo did. Um, I think that it was purely because... There was a song, people knew it, it was getting played, he was getting asked about it, that made it a lot harder for him just to to shrug it off as if it was nothing. Because, you know, p- people that he probably wouldn't have expected, I mean, I know even his brother, his own brother was sort of laughing about it with him. So, it, you know, the fact that it made it into the household, I think, okay, that's a good, it was a good test to see, you know, how far can a song go? You know, and, and just in the wider sense, you know, it's, it, taking away the Arsenal element, you know, it just it gives me more confidence that just moving forward, I can still write catchy songs that aren't Arsenal related that should hopefully in the future make some kind of uh, make a splash. But it's, yeah. you never know what's going to work and what's not going to work. That's the thing about music. You can, you can spend thousands of pounds on a marketing campaign and the song still does nothing. And we've signed a thing, we spent nothing. And we had loads of success with it in terms of the the marketing. It was it was a great, it, you know, really showed the power of social media. Well, let me ask you that because <clears throat> you are a musician for a living. I mean, right? That is that is really yeah. what you what you do as a career: a DJ, a percussionist, a singer, a songwriter. You know, you played with some major acts, and like, I think there is a lot of confusion for people about like what virality does for you in this day and age. And you know what? You know, I cannot. Um, claim to have really well i i have a viral video about me out there but it is it is not of a flattering (laughs) variety yeah and it it is certainly not one that um that i benefit from in any material way all right right. Um, okay i've got to see this now yeah i i just was doing it hosting a tv show i screwed up massively and then uh that went viral you know the cool thing about it though just as a little aside is uh a clip of that wound up in the pixar movie up so I, I do make oh, an appearance wow. in the Pixar movie Up, which is cool. And I got to shoot a, a TV show in L.A. called uh, Tosh.0 that made fun of me for half I an remember hour. that. So, yeah, that was like a, yeah. vi- a viral internet Yeah, yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's my, that's my little, little thing that, that happened to me. But, I, you know, I, I guess what I'm curious about, and we'll get on to some of your other Arsenal songs in a moment, but yeah. for someone who wants to make a career in music, like, is there, do these kinds of, episodes of virality do these moments where something catches on where something becomes part of the culture do you ever really see an ability to capitalize on that from a career standpoint i mean i, th- I think there are a lot of people that think oh if you put a tiktok video up and it goes viral or you know you have a yeah. you have a viral tweet you've made it and you can retire and you'll cash those Twitter checks <laughs> yeah. for the rest of your life i mean can you speak a little bit to the to the experience of how that whirlwind works when something suddenly caught on, when suddenly you're you're in the culture and people are talking about something you did, and, and whether there really is a moment to capitalize on that or whether it's just sort of a, a fun aside from your main sort of thrust of your music career. Well, I think, I mean, in the case of in the case of Sign the Ting, the, the residual work that I got off that, um, most of it was actually from it was from Arsenal fans. That were that worked in the media, mm. so Soccer AM that came through an Arsenal fan in the media, Devlin, um, Abu Dhabi TV, Jane Hancock, another Arsenal fan, um, just uh, another one for Channel Four. When I got, I got commissioned to do something for Channel Four again, um, that was from Arsenal fans. So I think there's who, who definitely... knew you because of Signed to Ting specifically. It was from, yeah, it was off the back of Sign the Ting. So they knew about me through Sign the Ting. And they'd approach me to say, either can we do an interview or would you be up for writing something? For example, um, and I know we'll come to this later, but uh, it was through in, being interviewed on Abu Dhabi TV about Sign the Ting that uh, the woman that worked for Abu Dhabi TV then ended up working for BT Sport. And off the back of that, um, she asked me to write a song about um, Oxlade Chamberlain. 
double barreled name, Oxley Chamber Lane. Just right for the gunners when we're at the lane. Huh. Ready to fire and fire and fire again. Showing his passion and desire to win the game. Unique and original, finishing clinical. Strong like an ox in a box, getting physical. Listening to all the media, waxing lyrical. Buying it for 10 million, it was a miracle. Ox. Jumbo, jumbo. It's just a ox. It's Mr. Ox, released from his cage. 20 years of age, he's on a rampage. Built like a bovine beast on a mission. Ready to rumble in peak condition. Watch as the Ox rocks a little brilliance. When he hit a half volley against the Brazilians. One, two, pass a move, smash, it was over. Daddy Mark missed it asleep on the sofa. Ox. Jumbo, jumbo. It's Mr. Ox. Jumbo, jumbo. It's Mr. Ox. Uh, because he was a, a, a BT ambassador. I'm not too sure if he is anymore, but at the time he was a BT ambassador and he was supposed to be uh, coming into the, the studio one day and they said, oh, it'd be great if, you know, you could write a song about him and perform it to him. So I thought, okay, fine. And that's, you know, how I ended up writing Mr. Ox. Um, so, I mean, there were, all of those were great opportunities. I, I, I would say... You know, obviously, it's it, on anything that's viral. You know, you have the the peak moment where you know things get really busy, and and inevitably things tail off. So, I was under no illusion that you know, you know, I didn't think, wow, this is my big break, this is my chance. I didn't think that because you know, I, I've been doing this, I've been professional from since for about twenty years now, and within that framework, you have lots of high moments and you have your low moments. So I was able to, you know, keep myself on, you know, in check and not allow, you know, not allow myself to go, oh, wow, this could, this could lead to X, Y, or Z. I just enjoyed it for what it was. I, I enjoyed the fact that people got the song and, and were singing it and found it funny. And so regardless of what came after that, I think just for, for the importance it made to me, I think that was more important than anything else that came with it. Because as a songwriter, you know, I think just as a writer, not just writing of songs, but when you're writing and you're creative, you, you know, you go through loads of periods of self-doubt and thinking, should I still be doing this? Why am I doing it? Are people going to get it? Are they going to like it? Um, mm. And so when you actually have people going, yeah, we, are, we found this funny. We found it so funny we're going to show it on you know, national TV, you know, that, that made a big, that made a big step. But I think you do have to, when you're a musician, you do have to be able to enjoy the big moments, but also keep yourself humble. Because I mean, I was, you know, I'd, I'd been teaching, uh, even though, you know, I was a professional musician, self-employed, but I, I was also teaching uh, drums in some local secondary schools cool. uh, near to me. And so you can be, th- in a situation where maybe over the weekend you've played with a big artist, you know, and then on Monday you're in school teaching an 11 year old how to play the drums. And so I think that maintaining that definitely keeps your feet on the ground because, you know, it was, there was just an absolute sense of normality. You come into school, just everything was normal. The kids didn't know anything about any of the things I did other than I was just their drum teacher. And so I think that was really. I think important just in, in terms of moving forward to have that reality check on a regular basis that, you know, yes, you're still, you you know, you've had this song, but you know, it didn't bring me rich, masses of riches or anything. So I still had to just go to work, you know, do my teaching and, you know, and keep, keep writing songs. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something that I, and we'll get on to some of the other songs in a minute. I just, you know, I think one of the things that's interesting in talking to you is there's a lot of different people, and, and organizations and types of content created around the club, right? So you have podcasts yeah. like ours, um, and and you have uh, YouTube channels. Obviously, the one that everyone thinks of is Arsenal Fan TV, and people have particularly polarized opinions about that uh, operation. But there are a lot of other YouTube channels that are, you know, I, I think a little more milk toast, right? Just sort of straight yeah. straightforward analysis. You have. Uh, someone like yourself, you know, writing songs uh, about Arsenal. You have bloggers, uh, you know, not to mention the, the traditional media, right? Legacy media like journalists and, and TV broadcasters yeah. and things like that. But so I think to people who are not involved in creating content around Arsenal, 
there's sort of a confusion, a chicken and the egg confusion. And sometimes people will say, oh, you know, you're trying to profit off the club. Um, yeah. And, you know, I can speak for myself, you know, when it comes to podcasting and blogging, for example, I read Ars Blog. I was inspired by Ars Blog. I loved his writing. I loved the way he shared his passion and, and information and, you know, analysis of the club. And I started doing it and I love doing it. Yeah. And then Linus asked me to be a part of a, a podcast he was doing. And I, I'd had fun guesting podcasts and I've hosted TV shows for a while. So I was like, that would be a lot of fun. You know, for me, just speaking for myself, I didn't have enough outlets to communicate my thoughts about the club. I live in the United States. I watch the games yeah. alone predominantly because um, people don't want to spend time with me in person. So, <laughs> you know, I don't have the, the yeah. group of friends I can go down to the pub with. Maybe that would have changed everything and you wouldn't have to hear my voice right now. But, like, I guess what I'm driving at is, you know, content starts to grow in popularity. And if it does, it, it's possible that it can benefit an individual personally in terms of their career yeah. or, or monetarily. So like, how do you react to any suggestion of like, oh, you know, you're doing this stuff to benefit you or to profit off the club or, you know, how do you react to looking at types of content, whether it's podcasts or blogs or the music you write or whatever it is and, and the relationship between how it starts first as a fan and then maybe <clears throat> evolves into something that winds up having a benefit to you, you know, and, and are you cognizant of that? Is that, is that something that you, you try to be thoughtful about? Well, I think, I mean, look, Arsenal's a massive entity, as, as we all know. Yeah. And <laughs> all of the songs that I've written about Arsenal have always been with a positive spin. So, so there's never been anything... I mean, even, I guess Sign the Ting was satirical. It was poking fun at Theo, but it was still largely positive because the message was, I want you to sign the contract, you know. And so all of the songs I've, I've done about Arsenal have always been f look like through a lens of positivity, you know, in order to, to big up, you know, Theo, to big up, uh, you know, Oxley Chamberlain and Jack Wilshire is to, you know, to support them. It's, you know, so never, so I've never written anything to bring the team down or to have a, a, a negative slant on it. Now, if there's some, a, a positive reaction out of the songs that I've done, then I don't see, I mean, look, it's not going to stop people from watching Arsenal, going to the matches. So there's nothing that my songs uh, were doing or have done that have stopped, you know, Arsenal earning money or earning any revenue. And so I think within that framework, I, yeah, d d don't see any any problem about, you know, if, if I get some recognition or maybe sell a few records out of it, then, hey, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily determine that as something negative maybe you could say it's profiteering i mean the, the one thing i was conscious of is arsenal do have a big fan base so mm. if you're gonna try and have people listen to it at the very least then writing a song that was to do with arsenal was the best way to start as opposed to just having something that's so completely original not about arsenal and trying to get people to listen to it is incredibly difficult and yep. so, go ahead, sorry. yeah, that's just the, yeah, that's just the nature of how music is. There's people on social media all day, every day, listen to this, listen to that. So I understand that, you know, it's a very congested market, but definitely using the, the Arsenal fan base to, to at least listen to it. Um, there was definitely the plan behind that, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say necessarily it was a negative thing. I don't think it brought any negativity onto the club um, and, and yeah I, I wouldn't say there was anything bad that what, what I was doing other than just writing songs to support the team yeah I don't think <clears throat> when it comes to fan content that the tail wags the dog I just don't think that I think there are some people that think you know if if bloggers are negative or um, Arsenal Fan TV is negative or podcasters are negative mm. or we write songs that are, you know, that lampoon the club or something that that will yeah. change the perception. And the reason I don't believe that is I simply think that sports are a rare example of a place where the results are very clear and obvious, where yeah. the trajectory of an organization is fairly clear and obvious. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to obfuscate. You know, if you're 20 points clear at the top of the table, it doesn't matter if there's some podcaster who's whining about it yeah. um you know and i would be happy to be that guy by the way whining while we're 20 <laughs> points going to the top table it's, yeah. it's not going to change anything so you know i i do tend to agree with what you're saying well let's do this let's shift gears a little bit and just talk about some of the other songs you've wrote and then get to some of the more um uh 
let's say big names that that you can drop in the pod before we before we say goodbye. Certainly, but I mean you have uh, you have put together quite a few songs. I mean, Signed to Ting, I assume is sort of the the biggest one. But maybe let's just go through a few of them and and what what you were thinking of. So, um, people who may not know from my blogging days, I was a huge Jack Wilshire fan. Um, you know, and and I am not. Uh, from London, as you may be able to tell by the sound of my voice. So I did not have yeah. that sort of English connection to him. But I, but I did really connect with him and, and was very frustrated by the injuries and the way his career didn't pan out. You wrote a song, Jack's Back. He took two steps forward, one step back. Getting better in the middle on the attack. Flew into a tackle, then he heard a crack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. When he got injured, I was bitter. Everybody felt the same on Twitter. Wishing him the best, hoping he got fitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. Need to make it clear so everybody understands. I really don't care who shakes whose hand. But I'll tell you what I'm concerned about more is how he's gonna play and is he gonna score. His injury was bad, like Michael Jackson. But now if it was my call, Jack's on. He'll give you everything and more, more, more. J -j Jack, Jack, J -j Jack, 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 Jack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. I can't believe it's been so long since I saw Jack. Uh, were you as enamored with Jack, and and was that meant as a a sort of effort to spur him on in in his recovery? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely it was. Yeah, I was a big Jack Wilshire fan as well, and was equally frustrated. That he just gets so close to some consistency and then just found himself injured. And I know that, you know, you do get players like that that just, you know, I think we've had our fair share of, of players that have had lots of long term injuries and aren't quite able to realise their, you know, their full potential. And so with Jack's back, which actually it, uh, features, I think, three of uh, Linus's children in the chorus, <laughs> singing, mm. singing the chorus. Um, that, was, that was done purely, again, just to, you know, let him know, as, as an Arsenal fan, I'm supporting him, you know, I'm looking forward to him coming back. You know, we missed him, we missed what he brought to the club, and also, I think, because he'd, he'd been at the club from such a young age, you know, there was that sort of element as well of, re you know, because you... you he was, cons you know, considered a, a homegrown player. Uh, I wanted him to do well even more. You know, I don't like seeing players be at the club for such a long time and then never really kind of, you know, reach their full potential. So that was a song in which uh, it was definitely about bigging him up. And there was a... That particular song has a... a, um, a, a, a there's lots of Michael Jackson terminology coming up. Um, and not, not the not the pedophile stuff though, right? Well, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely none of that stuff. But yeah, um, <laughs> more just um, more just to do with you know, obviously Jack. You know, uh, the fact that Jack was in the title. I love. I, I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, so actually, look, I loved his music too, man. I'm sorry to throw in it in there. I just feel like you know, I got to take my shots when they. No, no. So, I mean, it's, it's a very controversial yeah. issue with Michael Jackson, but yeah. I mean, you know. He he was he was found innocent. That's that's all I could. Uh, you know what? I'm, I am not but... going down that road. Man. <laughs> I'm, going down you, that road. you you take your kids to Neverland Ranch. <laughs> Look, I, I don't have that argument. I, I will say this. I will say this. There's no debating the greatness of the music and the influence he had on people. We'll leave it at that. Keep we'll, going, we'll keep please. Leave it at that. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I, I, an option. Furthermore, I'd I'd done uh, a masterclass with um, Michael Jackson's. Sound engineer is a guy oh, wow. called Bruce Swedeen. And Bruce Swedeen mm -hmm. recorded and mixed all of Michael Jackson's solo albums, and but also was uh, a long time worker with uh, Quincy Jones. So, loads and loads of stuff that Quincy Jones did, Bruce Swedeen happened to be the sound engineer. Frank Sinatra and Michael McDonald and James Ingram and George Benson, all of these artists. So, there was also that kind of thing in the back of my mind, just a really big fan of his. So there was a line in, in Jack's back which says, um, his injury was bad, 
like Michael Jackson, but now if it was Michael Jackson. So I was, uh, <laughs> I was quite proud of that lyric because it was able to, you know, build on that particular theme, um, uh, uh, you know, for the theme of Michael Jackson. But yeah, absolutely, that song I really like because it's got a very kind of retro sound to it. Um, and again, it's a fun song. It's got it's got Linus's kids doing the chorus. Um, oh, that's awesome! And, <laughs> I didn't know uh, that. <laughs> yeah. cool. no, I mean, I think this was seven years ago now, so they were mm. very young. Uh, but yeah, so that that was the really the story of Jack's back. I also was asked about that when I was doing the Abu Dhabi TV interview. So that was able to also cross over through again. Soccer AM played it, um, so that just gave it some an additional push that otherwise it probably wouldn't have had because I think it's very difficult. If you set out to make some, to try and get something to go viral, you know, it's, it's not easy, you know, because you, as you said before, it's a zeitgeist thing. It's some, it's capturing a particular moment at the exact right moment where people go, yeah, this is perfect. And I think we've signed the thing. It got there. I think with Jack's back, there was less of a, a satirical edge to the lyrics on that song. Um, you know, he wasn't due for, you know, a new contract or anything. There was no real controversy going on with him other than the fact that he was injured. So I think that also had something to do with the fact that it did, didn't have quite have the same impact that Sign the Ting. I mean, none of the songs have had the impact that Sign the Ting has. Um, yeah. Well, and, and which to again, be fair, I think just, shows, yeah. j- just go on Twitter and you'll see an account of, you know, someone who's a really um, knowledgeable, interesting analyst of the game with, you know, 700 followers and then there'll be like a troll account that basically just writes memes and they'll have 72,000 followers. Like, <laughs> there is something to be said about the yeah. fact that if something's catchy and it makes people laugh, it, it has a way of connecting with people a little more than something that's thoughtful or supportive. Or, you know, I mean, we, we all eschew uh, sincerity at times, right? <laughs> right? I mean, we, we are yeah, more drawn yeah. to the sort of comical or the, the, um, the parodies than, than we are of things that are that are more genuine or more sincere. No, 100%. I agree. I agree. I think um, there's definitely something in that. Well, so, all right. So a couple others. I mean, you, you mentioned the Mr. Ox song. You, you wrote uh, a song for Cazorla, which, if I remember it correctly, is uh, based off Informer. That's right, yeah. yeah. So that was very much a, a kind of a quick little throwaway song. In fact, uh, Kazula was done, that was the second song I did after Common New Gunners. Um, and again, it's a, a very short song based on the Snow Informer song. Um, and one of the lines in that was Kazula, uh, we nicked him when the cash ran out at Malaga, he'll take your back four down. And so at the time, again, it's it, within the lyric, Malaga had run out of cash, you know, the, 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 um, the cash flow had, had run dry. And so, which is maybe, why maybe we they should have kept him. their powder dry like Arsenal. Cause that's why we were but, so successful. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just to take a leaf out of our, yeah. our book. But, mm. uh, so, so with the, so with that song again, it was, you know, off the back that we'd managed to get this fantastic two footed player, from, you know, off on the cheap, you know, even though it's not our money, it's still kind of our money, if you know what I mean, from a fan's point of view. So you always like to get a, a fantastic player at a, a reduced rate. And I think Wenger was um, the king of that, wasn't he, with all, of the, all the players he was able to buy at just, you know, bargain bin prices and then just sell them for, you know, lots of money. This was earlier on, I think in, in later years, I think we, you know, lots of players that we did sell, um, you know, we didn't really get what I think we should have got for them. No, the uh, irony is we, we did a great job buying for a while. It was ultimately our poor job selling that probably yeah, landed us yeah. in the hot water. I, hey, here's a question. I mean, so you, you wrote these songs, you know, some more popular than others. Certainly you wrote a song about La Cazette as well. Hit, hit, hit. 
Lacazette, Lacazette, come place your bets. How many goals do you think he can get? Sky's the limit, give him a minute. Scored on his debut, fast in it. Same as the mighty, in your righty. Maybe that's why he came to Blighty. It's a sign, now's the time to break the curse of number nine. Lacazette, Lacazette, don't break your sweat. Take the ball, put it in the net. I'm smiling, he's gliding. Leading from the front like a first violin. On the radar for 10 years. I'm just so glad the man's here. So good luck, welcome to the club. You know, say, I had to make a dub. Lacazette, Lacazette, don't forget When you put on the can up on your chest We'll be singing, you'll be grinning Happy with all the games that you're winning On the move, so smooth Wait until him get into the groove So slick, no tricks Just goals, some of them sick Over to you There's a lot of tests that you gotta get through You'll pass, with class Even though the game is so fast We'll back you, all the way Even sometimes when you don't play Show fight, keep it tight Prove the awesome was right. Like said, like said. Um, you know that that borders on like, do we need a lot? Because that song. So let me ask you this: You sent yeah. me a list of stuff you, you wrote. I'm familiar with some of it already. I, yeah. I obviously have looked around at some of the stuff that you have out there. But is there? Look, I have tons of music that I am not telling anybody about. At the end of one of the Patreon pods, I put like 20 seconds of one of my songs. It is the most I'm ever going to put out there. They do not belong out there for public consumption. Uh, yeah. Just to give you an idea of how bad this album was, one of the songs, I shit you not, was titled Fields of Yesterday. Um, you know, I, I can't, <laughs> I, I just can't explain what was going on in my head at that time. Um, I, I wasn't a drug user. My hair was not down to my shoulders. I, I, I don't know. But what I will tell you is um, I have those misgivings. Do you have a player or a concept Arsenal song that you wrote that you are keeping from us? That, you, that you're, yeah, you know, I, did you I, write I, a Mustafi I, song? Did you write, you know, do you have, do you have that black sheep song that you're, you're embarrassed about? I do have one song that oh, I yes, did write. Please share. Um, it was about Bakary Sanya. But, but that's um, wonderful. Yeah, but it, but the actual song itself wasn't very good. Oh, okay. That was that was the thing. <laughs> that's the, that's the, a the small problem. Was there. Yeah, yeah, it was, and, and also I'd kind of. I'm sure Tim would love it. Maybe I don't know. He hasn't heard it yet. He, okay. he might absolutely hate it. I mean, the fact that I didn't send it to you tells, shows tells that, you the story. You know, right? It wasn't very good. It was called Bakery Sign the Ting. So I'd re, I'd regurgitated. Oh boy. Sign yeah, the, se- the sequel's never as good as the original. No, nah, it wasn't. <laughs> it just wasn't. And so no. that's one of the songs that I thought. And it was forced as well. I would kind of forced See, myself to write it. See, that's why I never wrote Fields of Yesterday too. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you're never gonna, you're never gonna make one as good as the original. Um, no. Well, so so you forced yourself to write. It didn't come out. Well, I, I appreciate you letting us know. I, I will not go chase it down. Um, no, don't try and find it, please. No, no, I I, I won't. But but ha- all right. How about this? So let's get to the stuff that's not specifically Arsenal related. Just just at the moment. How about um. Some stuff you've written that you're proud of that's not Arsenal related, and then maybe you can share some of the some of the more um, the high water marks for your career in terms of someone you performed with, where you were kind of awestruck, or or an experience you had that that was really memorable, where you felt like, wow, I, I can't believe I'm I'm sort of doing this right now. Okay, well, uh, non Arsenal songs. I mean, I did a, a song called Troll. Troll. Oh. Uh, uh. I bet you thought that what you wrote was funny on your last tweet It wasn't, you were talking about me and my family Atting me, hashing me, it's like flattery Except for when you're saying that you wanna batter me Chatting shit, stirring it up, you can't leave me And all the things you're saying are wicked, like General Levy Keep it up and I'ma call the police Because I'm tired of your games and I want some peace You disgust me, trust me All the skeletons in my closet are dusty there must be a way to make a troll disappear, make him go away. Sheldon Freud has a shady friend that won't ever stop until it gets revenge. Looking for your weakness, just as I speak this, trying to figure out a way that we can defeat this. Troll, go back into your hole, because that's where you belong. You're a troll, baby. Troll, crawl back into your which was about, you know, internet trolls. Um, 
which is you know a big deal a big issue for a lot of people especially on you know social media did you name clive specifically or you leave his name out? <laughs> no i couldn't i love clive i could never in fact right. i've got an right. program for him clive live okay clive live. You, yeah you can have that clive run before yeah, someone clive, else listening clive gets live. <laughs> um but it was um it was one of those ones where you know so, so the song was written with you know trolling in mind it's a very kind of funky, soulful uh, sounding song. And, I've, you know, I'm proud of that. It didn't go viral or anything, but it's, you know, available. And it's still, you know, it's still necessary today because, you know, people are still getting trolled on a daily basis and it still affects a lot of people. I mean, Alex Scott the other day was talking about how much abuse she's had from people, um, you know, tro- internet trolls, you know, just about the fact that she's a woman and also, the, you know, all of that kind of nonsense. So that was the song I was proud of. I did another song. Uh, it was football related, but not specifically to Arsenal called uh, Wash Your Mouth Out. Wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. Don't make me get the soap. Wash your mouth out. Because this ain't a joke. Wash your mouth out. Stop bad mouthing. Wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. No luck allowed in. Wash your mouth out. Oi, wash your mouth out. You. Wash your mouth out. Time for the people to coordinate a movement to try and eliminate. The song's about United and the plane of the 96 fans who died at a game. What makes you think I might be in coordinate? I don't find it funny singing about rape. Football's what we love. Now the hate. So wash your mouth out. Get on with the game. Stop bad mouthing, wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. Don't make me get the soap, wash your mouth out. Because this ain't a joke, wash your mouth out. Stop bad mouthing, wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. No luck allowing, wash your mouth out. Oi, wash your mouth out. You. Wash your mouth out. Time to stop all this monkey business. When you're caught red handed, no forgiveness. Too late to say that it's a bit of mischief. This is the pill to try and kill the sickness. Cut out the insults, let's be friends. Because a slap in a mouth could offend. I read what you said, so please don't pretend. Hashtag W. Stop bad mouthing, wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. Don't make me get the soap, wash your mouth out. Because this ain't a joke, wash your mouth out. Stop bad mouthing, wash your mouth out. What's that you're shouting? Wash your mouth out. No luck allowed in, wash your mouth out. Um, and initially I was approached by uh, somebody I went to school with who um, happened to be working for Kick It Out at the time, who wanted, again, he asked me if I could reuse sign the ting but kind of come up with something to do with you know racism in football and i thought look it's not going to work having already tried to do the bakery senior thing and so uh i wrote a song called wash your mouth out so it's just about you know you, you, you know using that old phrase about washing someone's mouth out with soap when they you know use bad language um so i did this song in the end uh kick it out you know they lost interest in it. Fair enough. Um, and but there's someone from Channel Four approached me, and it was about the same thing. We want you to write a song about racism in football, and so I had this ready-made song yeah. available. Yeah. Just uh, so which, happens I've got which, one for you. It just so <laughs> happens I've got this song. Yeah. And so yeah. they, um, so that was shown on Channel Four on, on just a few days before New Year's Eve. So that was something I was proud of. And then outside of football, um, as I mentioned before. Um, one of the big songs I had was called Hey Girl by Ear Dis. Um, mm. Really proud of that. I got, you know, lots of, um, sort of kudos from that, especially from the, you know, from the funky house um, scene, in, in spe- specifically in the UK. But because the label that we'd signed to uh, were really big on doing compilations for other brands, we were lucky that uh, the record just got put on loads of other compilations. Um so that helped from a financial point of view and just in terms of, um, you know, some kind of success as a songwriter. Um, other songs, uh, did a remix for Craig David for one of his songs. Um, that was quite interesting. I mean, again, there's loads of, sort of individual songs that I've done, which I'm, I'm kind of, I'm proud of. But those are the, the standout songs, I would say. That's awesome. Um, and so, you know, I mean, has has there been a performance or a moment or a session record, uh, recording or a live performance you were involved in that, you know, you just, you say, you know what, if I never did music again, I'll look back on that and, and that was influential for me or something that I'm, you know, was really exciting. You know, I, I know, you know, look, easy for me to say, right, because every day I get to turn on a microphone and talk to people like Tim and, and Clive and, and Paul yeah, and Scott. Yeah, blessed. And so I'm blessed, of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as, are, as are they, no doubt. But, I mean, do you have, do you have something like that in your career? Um, 
Well, I mean, there's lots of there's lots of kind of well known artists I've, I've sort of performed with. I mean, some of them include Pharrell Williams. So I was oh, a big awesome. fan of yeah. Pharrell, um, especially because you know he's just written so many amazing songs and produced so many amazing songs. So that was I've never been awestruck, and I think that's possibly because. You know, as a musician, you do find yourself in, in situations where you're sort of meeting someone famous. And the worst thing you could do is come across as awestruck. You know, you have to kind of, even if you are, you have to be able to kind of contain it. And because, th- because that particular artist will get that all the time, every day from everybody. And so I think when you're working with them, you have to give off a different kind of energy that you're not awestruck and... You know, even if you're a fan, you still just have to keep things about business. So that was one. Shakira um, was well, another one. That was did, was that, that tricky. Was I mean, did, did did you have to like ensure that you didn't like steal her away from PK, you know, or anything like that? Just you know, don't want. Well, you know, she was giving me she was giving me the eye, but I just yeah. think, look, you know, I'm a taken man. Just sort of, you know, oh, okay. come on, well, love. Then, yeah. Just yeah, stick yeah. stick to your let's stick, stick to your to professionalism. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep it prepared. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that we have Skype, Skype separating us, or who knows what I would do. You know, I'd be tempted to risk it. All, so it's good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, that was exciting. I mean, so so you were you were performing uh, drums for, on, for one of her live performances. Uh, yes, I p- performed with Shakira. That was percussion, uh, the O2 Arena. Oh, very cool. For the um, this Ca- Capital Radio, I have a thing they do every year called the Jingle Bell Ball. So that was for the Jingle Bell Ball. Uh, J Lo. Um, really? Did, did something with JLo on Parkinson's She's fairly uh, well known. Parkinson show. Um, she she was great. She sang live as well. You know, and lots of artists don't sing live. Mm. Um, depending on what the you know, if it's for TV again, a lot of it's it's very difficult to do that within the time uh, the time that they have. Right. Um, Ricky Martin again. That was that was fun. That was a European a short European tour. And he was a really, really lovely guy, really down to earth, um, just no airs and graces. And, you know, we were all the band were kind of treated, you know, really well and respectfully. So, I mean, yeah, there hasn't, I wouldn't say there's been a, a single, actually, no, there was one person I performed with, a woman called Marsha Ambrosius. And she was, um, that was at the Jazz Cafe. And she used to be a part of an act called Flowetry, which was like a mm-hmm. hip hop act. And one of the songs that uh, Marsha wrote was a song called Butterflies, which, in Michael Jackson again, ended up being used on uh, Michael Jackson's Invincible album. And so the gig that I did with Marsha was done, it was, I think it was a few weeks after Michael Jackson had died. And so playing Butterflies at the, at the Jazz Cafe, it's a fantastic song anyway, but actually playing it with the, the woman that had written this song that was a moment which I really, it just had a feel. There was a lot of love in the room and it just had a, a, it felt very powerful and I felt really privileged. That was her first UK um, performance as well. Wow. So I, I felt even more, you know, as a, as a solo artist. So there's those moments which you, again, you don't necessarily feel awestruck, but you, you feel appreciative that you've had, that you've been the one chosen to play, you know, because there's, there's so many amazing musicians you know, around, you know, you're all kind of fighting over the same, same works. So and lots of the time it's getting, you get the gig because it's through somebody, you know, uh, or they've heard about you or you've, you know, you yourself might have a decent reputation. Uh, but all of those experiences have been great. And, and like I said, you can play with an artist, you know, like the, those that I've mentioned, but then the next day, you know, you having to maybe go and teach, you know, a, a drum class or, you know, teach, you know, somebody about publishing and, and songwriting. And so it does, maintaining a level head through the, the highs and lows is, is the best way to stay sane and just to stay consistent. Because it is easy to go, hey, you know, I've played with these, all these artists, I don't need to do this. But, you know, to survive as a musician, especially now, and, you know, in this, after, you know, this post kind of pandemic world is going to be quite interesting for, for myself and, you know, loads of other musicians in terms of, you know, is it going to be the same? Are we going to get the same volume of work? Are we going to have to work remotely? I'm, you know, I'm not too sure how it's going to pan out. So, you know, this could be a quite interesting moment, you know, post-pandemic. Yeah, well, I, 
I mean, it's it's going to change. I would think every industry. It's going to touch every industry at least for a while. Um, yeah. So then, last but not least, I mean, as as you look forward, if you had to write a song tonight for an Arsenal player, for an Arsenal topic, for an Arsenal concept, you know, not coronavirus related. Is there yeah. a muse in the squad right now? Is there? Is there a per, you know? I mean, we have a sign to ting coming up with with Aubameyang, maybe potentially, or a sell to ting, mm. maybe depending on your perspective. I mean, is there? <laughs> yeah. if, if you had to do an, an Arsenal song right now, do you have a do you have a, a muse, a subject matter? Um, my my feelings my feelings towards Arsenal in general at the moment are feelings of hope. Especially now we've got Arteta. I really like Arteta. Maybe he really would be the guy. Yeah. Im- impressed. Maybe it would be him. Because he, as soon as he was interviewed, that first interview he had, I was really excited by it. You know, and I didn't, I didn't think I would be. Because when I initially heard the, that he was up for the job, I wasn't thinking, oh, wow, yeah, Arteta at all. I didn't think that. I just thought, okay, well... That's the second time he's come up now in conversation, bef- you know, before Emery got the job. So, and I lo- everything he says and that he's been doing, I've been really impressed by. So I think probably Arteta, I'd, I'd do something about him, if, if, if at all, um, because I feel he's the one that's kind of in a very short space of time, and obviously before football came to a complete stop, he changed people's perceptions of the club and I don't think I mean prior to him coming I you know I wasn't watching much Arsenal you know Arsenal football because it was depressing even when we won as you were saying before it just felt really dull watching yeah. us play and it felt predictable I was sick of seeing teams that you know weren't really on paper at Arsenal's level just come and embarrass us and make us look disorganised and a bit scared and not very strong. Uh, and now, I mean, look, there's still a long way to go and, and we don't know what's going to happen to, uh, you know, when football resumes. But I do believe that Arteta is the, the right man for right now. Um, and I think once he gets the opportunity to maybe spend some of Arsenal's money on players that he wants, then I think we'll definitely see you know, a continued improvement. But yeah, there's no... I don't think there's any players right now, as you said, Aubameyang might go, which I'd understand. I'd understand if um, Lacazette goes. Um, you know, I do like Martinelli, though, as well. He's another one that I would say is exciting to watch, but I don't feel there's enough. I haven't seen him, in, him enough to, to, to want to write about him just yet. I think the more I see on him, the more I'll probably get inspired to write about him. Yeah, I mean that—that that is one that definitely I can tell you. you go ahead and write a song because it's—it's going to be needed. <laughs> Look, I—I I don't want to tell you how to how to write a song or you know you, what your flow should be, but if you want to go with the secret to football is all right there underneath his Lego hair about Arteta. Oh, know, feel, fantastic! Feel free, man. You can have it. It's yours. The first one. If one's I free. use it, you'll get a credit. You'll yeah, get a songwriting credit. All right. Well, uh, Roxy <laughs> Arms, it is uh, great to talk to you. It's a great opportunity to talk about. Just something different. I mean, we're going to have to fill all this time. And, you know, I mean, obviously you're a great friend of Linus who started the pod. So we're happy to connect with you. Happy to have your song as the intro to our to our uh, podcast. We certainly hope that if anybody's listening, you know, and in need of songwriting, in need of a percussionist, in need of anything like that, we're all trying drummer, to help each other out. DJ, yeah, drummer, DJ, producer, songwriter, yeah, voiceovers. Someone to just stand in a room and, and look spectacular with, with no yeah. sleeves. Yep, I mean, because uh, <laughs> we all need to help out the Arsenal community right now and certainly uh, want to do that it. for you. Uh, so you can follow uh, Roxy at Roxy Arms on Twitter. You can certainly yep. look up his, his great music and, and get in touch. But Roxy, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You too, Elliot. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, man, this is great. My name is Elliot Smith. Of course, you can block me on Twitter. Yankee Gunner will be back with, uh, let's say, quote, a regular pod, close quote, uh, later in the week, assuming there is anything to talk about. We'll come up with something. We'll do more games. We'll do more fun stuff. I know there's been interest in the Origins pod that we put over on Patreon. Certainly going to look at, you know, as the the pandemic stretches out, um, making some of that stuff available because I know it's a tough time for people. And you might say, look, I want to support the pod. It's not a good time for me to sign up for Patreon. I, I totally totally understand that. And while the support we're getting is, is helpful for us actually, and, and totally appreciated. Um, it's just not right to ask anybody to, to spend money. They don't have at this time. And we get that. So I'll definitely look at, uh, releasing some of the, the Patreon stuff throughout the, 
the sort of pandemic period while we're all sort of stuck in our houses looking for things to do and get that out and make sure everyone has something to listen to. Uh, so for everybody, we hope you're staying safe. We hope you're happy and healthy. And uh, we'll have, you know, more hashtag content coming up soon. But until then, we love you and we'll talk to you after Arsenal 20, COVID-19.